need as per their MRI reports as X rays. So this is what we have been doing from last 15 years now, and we have two centers in Australia, and uh, our students are running those centers. And uh, today uh, we are going to talk about a topic which is very close to me, and uh, it is something which is, you know, which is very much in very much in fashion to talk about these days. Correct lifestyle. So I'll. And uh, <clears throat> we'll take it on from there. So just a second. Importance of correct lifestyle. So we'll keep this session a little interactive. I would want you to to type a few answers and uh, I'll and at the end of the session we'll do a q and so what is the correct lifestyle lifestyle is something that everybody talks about anyone who has got neck pain knee pain heart problem diabetes job or anything anything any problem that you can think of his or her friend advises the person to correct your lifestyle now lifestyle is something that is not limited to 24 hours it is your life style so how to improve life's style now it is very true that the that any problem that comes to a human body it can only come through one of the three possible ways. I'm going to talk about all, all of them today. And uh, you can improve wherever you can in your, in your lifestyle, wherever you think you are making a mistake. So correct lifestyle, is, is it something, uh, is it, something like this when when we talk about correct lifestyle people think of eating more vegetables people think of eating more fruits one thing when we talk about correct lifestyle people think of yoga people think of drinking more water people think of going to the gym and building six pack abs or if not building six pack abs at least losing some weight is, is on their top agenda. All these things are fed to you by the media. Is this correct or is it not correct? Is, is a point that we'll discuss today and you'll all know how to live a correct lifestyle. Now, tell me, eating fats is good or bad? Eating desi ghee is good or bad? You can type your answers in the chat box, those who can. Or uh, there are some people who are only listening to today's uh, program. They are not, uh, you know, they are not able to type the answers. But anyways, so those who can type, I will take their point and we'll take it forward from there on. And what does the chat says? Sorry. Uh, See, this zoom technology is new to all of us so i might make some <laughs> uh, mistakes while talking to your reading your messages at that so please bear with me so uh eating fats good within limits correct it's good it's good it's good in moderation yes fat is essential correct now all these answers are correct if you'll go 10 years before you'll realize that everybody was talking bad about fats you should not take ghee you should not take uh, uh, you should not take any fatty things in your diet you should stop taking uh, makhan malai and all those fatty stuff it should be thrown out of your diet it was a perception that was created by media the way they started creating false news about the coconut oil 
and there was a very strong reaction to this coconut oil thing that they started uh, talking about and it it was suppressed but the fact is everything that you think of a correct of a correct lifestyle is fed to you by the media so one more thing i want to ask you is what type of body would be the best the the a slim body is good a moderately uh, toned up body is good or a little bulky body or a little overweight body so called overweight or a little bulky body is good can you please type your answers in the chat box toned body right and uh, if i say even the gods when they were depicted in the indian mythology when if you'll see the gods photographs their murtis their their idols you will not find them slim you will not find them very toned up and you will find lot of our gods you know they are a little plump they are a little bulky they have they have double chin they 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 look very plump means so and especially the gods when we refer to look at some of the pictures of south indian gods and then look at some pictures of krishna when they depict him in uh, in in different forms so when i asked you this question it was a tricky question which kind of body is good because the answer has come through the conditioning of your brain that a toned body is good sorry a slim body is also good a toned body is also good and a, and a little chubby body is also good the problem comes when anything goes beyond a certain limit so excess of everything is bad we all know when karina kapoor started losing weight and she started promoting 50 surya namaskars a day and uh, zero figure th those terminology started coming in she actually fainted on the sets of her of one of her movies because that was that was over that was over uh, over on one side and if we talk about obese people then that is also excess on the other side so balancing is the key to life that is one thing for sure so being slim when we talk about correct lifestyle when we talk about fitness when we talk about health it is not the it is not the slim people it is not the it is not the the skinny guys who are actually the most fit we have patients who come in and they are 120 kg they are 130 kg of weight and still they they don't have any health issues they don't have diabetes they don't have heart problems they don't have thyroid they don't have they have nothing they are fit so even at 130 kg people can remain fit so only if you are slim you will become fit no there are people who develop problems if they start losing too much of their body weight their hair hair fall starts in to increase their nails start losing the luster their skin start developing wrinkles so excess of everything is bad even if you drink a lot of water it will it will dilute the electrolyte balance in the blood and you might uh, you know you, your skin will go darker and you will feel low on energy so drinking too much water is also not good so excess of everything be it drinking of water be it losing weight or be it gaining weight everything is harmful everything is bad what you have to do is to strike a balance yoga says arrest the disease before it occurs so the verse is hayam dukham anagatam arrest the disease before it occurs now how do you arrest a disease before it occurs the only way is this listen and respond to the signals of your body if you do not listen and respond to the signals of your body the problem is 
bound to come to your body for sure nobody can say that so listen and respond to the signals of your body when your body says i'm tired i've been working from 8 hours now i i need a break from this from from computers you says no 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 there is a deadline i have to finish this work today so so please bear with me and you know we'll do it quickly in another half an hour or so so you overlooked the signal of stiffness in the neck and cervical spondylitis is bound to happen is bound to occur it's bound to your body and if you would have listened to the signal of your body it was saying there is a little stiffness in the neck i'm feeling a little tired in the back so you would have if you would have done even simple exercises moving your neck up and down moving your head right and left or tilting your neck to the sides it would have relieved the stiffness of the neck to quite an extent that means you responded to the signals of your body now if you are responding to the signals of your body the problems cannot come in so for for example if you are eating if you are having your meals and you are done with your meals and then you know a friend comes over and says see i have brought this jalebi for you jalebi wow do piece to bante i mean i can have at least two pieces of it body was giving you the signal that i am full you overlooked the signal and you said it's okay chalta hai i'll have a cup of tea afterwards so it will settle down settle down everything that is where you overlook the signal and then the fat accumulation in the body will start happening then you will start developing the problem of acidity indigestion constipation bloating all those things will start setting in your body says at 10 o'clock i am feeling tired it's time to go to the bed you say are bahut kaam baki hai there is so much work i have to do i can't go to the bed right now you overlook the signal of your body and the aging of the cardiac muscle becomes fast when the cardiac muscle beats 72 times in one minute uh, on an average between cardiac muscle takes rest so it's contracting and then it is relaxing for the next contraction so when it is relaxing it receives its own blood supply so between two beats the rest, the gap is 0.04 seconds if you are resting sufficiently for 8 hours at night your cardiac muscle will get optimum rest but if you are working for 2 hours extra at night and you are giving 6 hours of sleep to your body the cardiac muscle will not beat 72 times it will be beating a little more than what it should be so the resting time between the two beats will reduce for 2 hours that's it it will not make a big difference it will not make an overnight difference to your cardiac health but in in 10 years in 20 years the cardiac muscle is bound to feel exhausted it it is bound to feel tired it will ask for rest and then when you will run when you will climb the stairs your body will say take a break i can't climb three flights at a time at in one go so if you take proper rest and you respond to the signals of your body it's all set now there are two exceptions to this it does not mean that you should start going to the golgappa guy and start eating golgappas every day because your body is asking you for it body body is asking you for, for this so there are two exceptions to this one is swad ki adhinta swikar nahi kar lega so you'll not surrender to your taste buds adhinta swikar nahi nahi swikar dusra alasya swikar nahi laziness is not allowed there are the only two exceptions listen and respond to the signals of your body it does not mean that you should rest for 12 hours because your body is saying 12 o'clock uthungi aaj to matlab aaj nahi uthti jaldi no laziness is not allowed 
so these are the two exceptions if you have slept at two o'clock at night you must complete eight hours of your sleep and you wake up late that's allowed it's absolutely fine when somebody says waking up at brahma murt is very good correct you must wake up at four o'clock in the morning that is the best time to wake up best best all entrepreneurs all big all biggies everyone who is probably on the top of their field or they are on the way to the top of their fields they wake up at four o'clock brahma mahurta but there is a, there is a there is a star on top of it which says sleep on time also you say no i'll only follow brahma murt time and i'll wake up at four o'clock i'll wake up at five o'clock or i'll wake up at six o'clock because my children have to go to the school but i'll not sleep at 10 o'clock at night what are you doing to your body please sleep it does not matter whether you slept you whether you slept at one o'clock or if you slept at 10 o'clock take sufficient sleep if you don't do that you are doing injustice to your body then waking up at four o'clock is not needed please wake up at six o'clock if you slept two hours late so correct lifestyle is not waking up at four o'clock correct lifestyle is going with the nature when the sun sets you should go to the sleep you should go to bed can you do that no because we have electricity you know and we we can stay awake for a long time and we can stay awake for the whole night also but it's it's normal to stay awake till 11 12 o'clock at night almost for everyone so please start correcting your lifestyle here so so your day does not start in the morning your day starts at night your day starts at night so what time do you go to the bed will determine what time do you wake up in the morning so to go to the bed so so the correction of the lifestyle will not happen overnight it is not something that i have told you today and you get on to this from yourself start implementing as much as you can from today i'll send you an uh, i'll send you a guided relaxation link you can play that link and start following those instructions mentally the moment you'll go to the bed you'll start feeling sleepy it means uh, the moment you play that clip and you're in the bed you'll start feeling sleepy and you'll fall asleep within 10 minutes that audio is for 23 minutes uh, that video audio that link is 23 minutes long but you i'm quite sure most of you will not even listen to the uh, to the last part of it because you would have slept already so if you have the complaint that bed on time i can't fall asleep play that audio you'll fall asleep for sure right? and then start waking up at whatever comfortable time you can after taking your eight hours of sleep when i talk about eight hours of sleep i'm talking about people uh, somewhere around 35 somewhere around 40s kind of eight to ten hours of sleep is actually recommended sleep as the age advances the sleep timing reduces so if you are let's say 60 65 then the yeah, then the sleeping time should be approximately six and a half to seven hours can be seven approx right? so you must take eight hours of sleep and then you wake up fresh in the morning and then the first thing to do is oh i wake up so late it's time to rush to the loo and it's time to make breakfast and do what are you doing to your mind as a first thought in the morning this is what everybody does most this is what most of the people they wake up on time and they start their day on a negative note sorry the programming the first thought of the day is i am late i don't do things on time i am always running i have so much work to do and then you keep repeating these excuses these statements throughout your day be it your office be it your relationship be it your health everywhere you will give the same statement i have so much to do i can't give sufficient time to my health 
sir i have so much to do i can only complete this much task today i can't do the i can't complete the full assignment you will give the same excuses every day to yourself and to everyone around you first day should be first thought of the day should be first thought of the day should be gratitude gratitude wow another beautiful day wow another opportunity to work another day to grow another day to learn something new what i do personally as a first thing in the morning so when you are half sleep i go and sit with the with the backrest you know or against the bed with a pillow and the cushion at the back and i relax focus on the breathing you are anyways half slept at that time so the doors to the subconscious mind are open doors to the subconscious mind are open and that is the time when you can do programming you can program your brain for anything that you want to so what do you want to program your brain for that's up to you so i'll sit i'll i'll do whatever i have to do i'll i i do x y z things and then after 5 minutes i decide one thing that i want to accomplish today one thing that particular case of slip disk i i need a solution for that particular guy he has been struggling from this pain from last 5 days and only 50% pain is gone this problem should be fixed today one thing my professional thing i want to get these wooden pillars for my for my place this hunt has been going on from last 3 months i'll close this hunt today by all means either i'll not hunt for the wooden pillars anymore or i'll close this deal today but this chapter will close today for sure i'll not think of buying wooden pillars again so one thing that is important that has been occupying your mind for whatever time period i'll complete this you have to decide and your mind knows ye possible or impossible nahi hai so whatever is possible or impossible is a different it has, it has different dimensions but whatever your brain can perceive is possible at least do that start with the simple things so to cut a jungle what is the principle when you have to cut a whole jungle what is the principle we follow cut the thinnest tree first cut the thinnest tree first to so start with the easiest thing start anything that you can start with so so from there the correct lifestyle starts and then comes the three pillars of your health one of them is definitely definitely rest we have already talked about it your thoughts for sure so i call them ahar vihar vichar diet activities and thoughts ahar vihar vichar diet activities and thoughts so thoughts we have already talked about to some extent ahar and vihar ahar means the diet that you take so what kind of diet you should take is definitely important should everybody uh, be taking the same kind of diet everybody should like uh, what is that food called anyways so everybody won't like same kind of fruits everybody won't like same kind of breakfast everybody doesn't like upma and poha in the morning right? there are people who like parathas in the morning that's all right that's absolutely all right when i say parathas in the morning i mean it i genuinely mean it you can have parathas in the morning how much your body has to decide 
स्वाद की अधीनता इज नॉट अलाउड एंड इफ यू आर ईटिंग हैवी कैलरीज यू मस्ट स्टे प्रिपेयर टू स्पेंड दो कैलरीज इट इज सो सिंपल यू कैन हैव पराठा इन द मॉर्निंग यू कैन हैव डबल चीज sandwich in the morning i'm absolutely fine with it please have it i have it for a lot of time means my breakfast when i was in my college my breakfast used to be six bananas half liter of uh, packet of milk put it all in one mixer churn it almost half a kato more than half a katori half a bowl of sugar white sugar into that mixer churn it so it becomes four full glasses of banana shake and that was the breakfast that used to be the breakfast when i was a athlete i was i have been a half marathon runner so that was okay means if i'll ask you to take four full glasses of banana shake as the first thing in the morning a lot of you will start gaining weight we were struggling by the weight we were losing because the expense of the calories was more than the intake of the calories so it does not matter whether you have parathas in the morning or whether you have uh, upma or poha in the morning whatever calories you are taking you should spend those calories that's it you can have whatever you want to have now when we talk about when i say this you can have whatever you want to have there is one thing that you must always follow all the problems that we face uh, all the problems that we see when patients come to us are related to acidic disorders spondylitis arthritis laryngitis gastritis meningitis everything that is itis in the end is an inflammatory problem inflammation so be it acidity or be it joint pain be it neck pain or be it lower back pain all these problems fall into the category of acidic disorders the other category is alkaline category in which there is practically no problem people don't come with any alkaline disorder so why people are suffering from acidic disorders is because their meals are highly acidic in nature now when you make your plate when you when you make your dish for your dinner for your lunch for a breakfast have a look at the dish that you are preparing for yourself how much acidic food is there and how much alkaline food is there in your plate you will realize that most of the food is processed most of the food is not raw or if at all there is anything raw or boiled or steamed in your plate it's only 20% of the plate not more than that so 80% of the food is acidic food that you are taking and 20% is the food that you are taking throughout the day so the problems people face are mainly acidic in nature so joint pains neck pain muscle spasms constipation pcod and all these things are related to the acidic side of the problems so i would recommend to have something that is more alkaline in nature i'm not saying leave parathas i'm saying add half a cup of vegetable juice in the morning on the breakfast table that's it that will balance the ph of the blood so you can have what you want to have and you can add something that is healthy if you don't want to have fruits as the first thing in the morning though having fruits as the first thing in the morning is definitely a good habit because your body has been uh, on a fast from last 8 to 10 hours your sleeping time and it has made some digestive juice in the stomach that is acidic in nature and if you'll add tea which is highly acidic or coffee which is equally acidic so you you are adding fire to the existing acid in the body and because your cells are craving for energy from last 8 hours they will absorb everything that you will put as a first thing in the morning so that is why the first thing that you have in the morning should be healthy so the way your first thought of the day should be healthy the same way your first 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 thing that you eat in the morning should be healthy now you can choose what you want to have 
half a cup of tea is good or a few cashews or almonds is a better option definitely cashews and almonds is definitely a better option you can also have a small fruit as a first morning that's because that is alkaline in nature and the acid the body has already produced will get nullified and lot of you would have been would now have become addicted to the tea uh, as a first drink of the day so that means ncv uh, the the narcotics bureau of india they have not categorized tea as an addictive substance so far but the fact is that tea is also addictive and you are also addicted to it you can't live a day without tea you can't start your day without tea that means you are addicted to the tea so the day narcotics control bureau will label tea as a addictive substance they will you know then the, then a lot of people will start quitting these addictive things so it's not a, just about tea it's about anything that you are addicted to anything that you are addicted to and in yogic philosophy it is important to to learn non attachment why is lotus given so much importance in yoga why is lotus given so much importance in the in yoga can anybody answer that why is because lotus it remains alone uh, and not with other flowers in the uh, mud and also when if if there is any drop of dirt on it the dirt just slides off it it doesn't remain on the petals so it in spite of being surrounded by mud it doesn't get dirty yes so correct that is why lotus is given so much importance and it is the national flower also because the philosophy is non attachment the philosophy is detachment the philosophy is i am happy in sorrow and happy in peace so even if there is a drop of water on lotus it is not affected with it it's all right it is still it's it's still you know it is not affected it is the way it is so the same thing we have to apply in our lives so you should be neutral to every situation whether it is good or bad whether you are happy or sad staying neutral staying some staying new, staying neutral is the right word staying yourself is the right word for that so the same way if you can maintain your uh, you know if you if you can maintain your true self that is the ultimate aim of following that philosophy so non attachment so why we follow fasting so we learn non attachment we leave salt for a day we leave things that we like so much we leave chocolates we leave we leave rotis we leave dal we leave we leave vegetables that we eat th throughout our life and we leave it for a day the idea is not to detox the body the idea is to learn non attachment from the things that we love so the idea of non attachment is integral to the practice of yoga so you should not drink tea as the first thing in the morning you should start detaching yourself from any any addiction not just tea any addiction you should get out of it be it the addiction of looking at whatsapp every 10 seconds or be it addic your addiction to the facebook or be it your addiction to anything that you can think of be it your addiction to to your partner anything you are supposed to live every role you are supposed to do all your duties with the attitude of non attachment so start quitting t if you are addicted to it for sure so getting back to the diet part of it the ahar following the correct ahar is absolutely important and when i talk about ahar i only want you to add some alkaline stuff to your diet and reduce acidic
foods that you probably take so acidic food includes colas sodas alcohol smoking your uh, spicy stuff your uh, your dark chocolates all of these are addictive and they are highly acidic in nature you should avoid those things and you should eat more of alkaline things chaach matha nairal pani means coconut water buttermilk on on uh, all these things are alkaline in nature vegetable juice fruit juices or fruits are the best to have actually so instead of fruit juice fruits having the fruits directly is definitely a better option so ahar path you must follow the alkaline and acidic principle to whatever extent you can and the last tip for for uh, ahar is to try to stick to a time that you can a tentative time breakfast approximately 8 39 in the morning approximately lunch approximately 1 130 in the afternoon dinner approximately 6 Oh, all right now six sounds a little earlier but dinner should actually be somewhere between 6 to 7 o'clock but you can still have your dinner around 7ish if you want to have so and if you if you will follow the principle the one i shared with you earlier listen and respond to the signals of your body you will actually realize hungry at 6:30 you will realize this so start listening to the signals of your body that's it rest of the things will all fall in place if your body says i want to have my dinner at 7 o'clock have your dinner at 7 o'clock if your body says i want to have my dinner at 6:30 have it at 6:30 now if you're in your office and you can't do it have some have some roasted peanuts or have some chana or have something that is available to you but respond to the signals of your body your body will give you the correct signal every time and the third thing is the vihar means the activities that you should do so ahar vihar and vichar so we have discussed thoughts we have discussed diet now we are going to talk about the correct activities that you should opt for now when we talk about correct activities people think of gym the moment you you think of healthy lifestyle you should think of yoga first that is the first thing because here you will start learning the new So you will start stretching those tight you will start you will start uh, opening the joints which have probably deformed to some extent because of the usage of mouse because of the usage of mobile for long time or because of the long sitting hours the anatomy of the body changes to some extent muscles become tight the ligaments become little less flexible and don't run behind a six pack ab body don't run behind you know the fitness people doing you know cross trainer the only image that comes to their mind is somebody having six pack abs somebody having big biceps somebody having uh, having a very slim body so please understand what makes news if a dog bites a man it's not news but if a man bites a dog that's a news so only a six pack abs will make a news for sure only you know somebody who is doing something unusual will make will make it to the news and you will get conditioned by the audios and the that are sent to you so please don't fall into the trap of what is shown to you by the media listen and respond to the signals of your body everything else will fall in place so are there are already news covering the injuries that happens because of faulty treadmills because of faulty yoga postures also and because of various other activities and very interesting thing for you <clears throat> all to know is abs is the biggest scam of the century so showing bodies like this should actually be banned 
showing people who are very slim in in advertisements should actually be banned because those are the bodies which are they are made like that every and the average population 90% of the population looks like you and me very average looking people we don't have six pack so we should not make these images these fancy looking yoga postures shirshasan or mayurasan or something like that as a target no we should not do to to improve our body from our today's level to the next level that's it we should not target uh, six pack or eight pack abs for sure and what are the reasons for back pain these days lifting heavy weights is one of the most common reasons which everybody does when they go to the gym and they come back with the back pain issues and they come back with a slip disc a repetitive motions like lifting dumbbells morning evening poor sure means sitting long hours sudden impact means your you know it can happen a lot of times so yoga is one of the safest way to start your fitness activity and when you start practicing yoga in in a static form you actually experience stillness in the movement you actually experience when you're going to your office you are relaxed when you're working in your office you are relaxed when you are driving back home you are relaxed when your kids are asking you for something that you are not happy about you are still relaxed so you guys stillness in movement movement everything every movement that you do movement of thoughts physical movements you guys stillness in movement needed so you should have a relaxed mind you should have a flexible body a, an elastic body that is a by product of doing yoga postures and uh, habits are definitely something that you should work upon so what's better gym or yoga what's definitely yoga is better gym is not bad but yoga is better if you go to the gym pick up small weights 2 kg 1 and 1/2 kg 1 kg weight and do some muscle toning with it that's okay do it don't jump onto the treadmills don't uh, go to the cycling don't go for uh, your uh, you know your uh, what do you call it cross trainer do muscle toning exercises do floor exercise don't go and work on the machines all weights if you go to the gym otherwise your body weight can actually work as a wonderful resistance when you do yoga postures so in gym and yoga yoga is better for sure static form of yoga or repetitive form of yoga so i prefer static form of yoga because it gives you stillness in movement repetitive form more like aerobics form of yoga so doing hatha yoga hatha yoga where you do movements in a static way you go into a posture stay there for a few seconds then you move into the next posture you may stay in that posture for a few minutes so staying in a posture is more important and what are the takeaways from the session before i uh, i conclude what i have discussed with you today there is one story that i want to share with you and this story is very interesting so uh, i have picked up the story from youtube and uh, so i'll just narrate it to you it fits very well in so it's about practice what do you practice in your life so there there is an archer and he is shooting arrows right into the bulls eye one after another and the public is you know they are applauding they are saying what a wonderful archer he is and he is shooting arrows to the bulls eye right one after another there is one person standing at the back and he says oh, it is just a matter of practice he shoots another arrow right on top of that arrow everybody claps the fellow standing at the standing at the back of the crowd says ah. so the archer becomes a little hyper and he goes to that fellow he says what do you mean it's just a matter of practice can you do that that fellow says no i can't do that i have an oil shop 
but can you pour oil into the bottle like I do it? So he picks up a bottle, pouring oil into the thin opening, and it goes right into the bottle, not even a drop of the oil spills. And can you do that? that no, I can't do that. He says, this is what I do. So I am, this is what I practice all day. So this is my skill. Archery is your skill because you. What is the moral of the story? What do you practice? Do you practice complaining? Do you practice cheat and deceit? Or do you practice meditation? Or do you practice correct lifestyle? Or do you practice yoga? Or do you practice a healthy diet? What do you practice? So if you do, if you follow the correct practice, everything is possible. So things will fall in place. So start the practice listening and responding to the signals of your body will fall in place everything 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 will fall in place i'm telling you everything will fall in place everything will fall in place when i say everything it goes to every aspect of your life health money relationships everything will fall in place listen and respond to the signals of your body your body gives you the right signal because it is connected to the universe it gives you the right signal every time so what do you practice can you please write it in the chat box what do you practice what would you practice from now what will you practice from today onwards yoga gratitude very good better sleep for sure very important what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Write down a few points. What else will you practice? Stretching of the body. Correct. Ahar, vihar, vichar. All the three things you will practice from today. Correct. Write down. Ahar, vihar, vichar. Your diet, your activities and your thoughts. Practice on all these three fronts. And everything will be all right. So. So today's takeaways are listen and respond to the signals of your body. Correct diet, time and quality of the food is very important. Vegetable juice, you should start following. You can click the photograph of the screen at the moment. So you, you have it with you as a reminder. Correct activities, 10 minutes of yoga practice in a day is more than sufficient. Actually speaking, 10 minutes of yoga asana is more than enough. If you sit in a yoga pose as a first thing in the morning, the way I said, sit down against the bed in the morning, for five minutes. I consider it as a five minutes of yoga in the morning. That is one asana I'm sitting in. Whether it is a relaxing posture or not, it does not matter. But I'm doing a yoga posture for sure. As a, for five minutes in the morning. So 10 minutes of yoga is very good. Add some stretchings to it. Do some exercises. And definitely correct sleep is important. Correct thoughts. So I'll send you the meditation link. I'll send you a guided relaxation technique. I'll send it to you through through Hello My Yoga team. And the last takeaway is the last takeaway is practice, practice, and practice. That is what we all do, and that is what we all need. We, it's just about focus. Where do you want to focus your practice to? Now we can probably take some question answers if there are any. It's already 6.20. My time is already up for today's session. And uh, we'll take quickly one or two questions if there are any. Thank you, Ashneet. You tell us more about kinds of alkaline foods. There's a big list available online means. There's no point uh, giving that list here. So, But you, you can definitely, fruits, vegetables. These are the two broad categories leaves so any fruit is more or less alkaline i'm not talking about very citrus or very 
uh, very citrus fruits, but more or less all the fruits are alkaline. And even if you have to take a citrus fruit and it's a seasonal fruit, you can have it. Thank you, thank you, vegetable soup. So I can also send you a recipe of a vegetable juice. So I'll, I'll send that recipe as well on, on your email. It will take us a day or so uh, and we'll, we'll right? Uh, so you have to be, yeah, so I have to be very quick. Next person is waiting in line. Thank you so much for the, for, for being wonderful audience and being, uh, and participating in the event. Thank you so very much. See you on 10th of October. Namaste.